Hello, hello, welcome back. 2022 DQ Debrief episode eight. Let's get started. Hi. Hi, ladies. Hi. Hi. I'm so sorry about that. So my daughter's birthday was Wednesday, so she has a birthday party in like an hour and a half. So I was like scrambling to get everything situated, but I'm so excited to meet you both. You too. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you for having us. Definitely. Oh my gosh, I love this. You guys are like twins. You talk in unison. <laughs> <laughs> so, okay. Chanel and Janelle. Did I say that correctly? Yes. yes. So awesome. Chanel, so I have on the birthday with the <laughs> things. I was intentional. <laughs> Janelle does. <laughs> I'm Janelle. I'm yeah, busted. Awesome. So ladies, I don't know if you have seen my shows before, but basically, the, like, it's a conversation. I really want to be able to bring a spotlight on language-based learning differences. And as you know, us being women of color, it's so important to talk about this and to change the narrative and to really give you a platform to share your stories. So those of you who are here, thank you so much. I know we only have uh, now 25 minutes, so I want to hop right in. So why don't you guys kind of share a little bit about who you are, what you do. I know you guys, I think we're in school in Trinidad, I believe. Yes. So I, I want to hear as much as you want to share. <laughs> All right. Thank you so much for having us. Um, so we're twins. We're sisters. Um, we are currently uh, speech language pathologists. Um, we work in New York City in Brooklyn and um, we enjoy our jobs. I think, and, the, and what we get to do, I think what makes our story so different is that we were both diagnosed with learning disabilities. Um, specifically, I was diagnosed with um, SD, SLD, uh, yes. specific language disorder, and you were, yeah, with reading, yeah, specific reading disorder. Yeah, so okay. we're working memory stuff. Yeah, um, and the thing is, what's so interesting about our story is that we both became speech language pathologists, and we didn't know we had um, disabilities till like maybe grad school. Um, wow. We always struggled, always struggled, but we were very motivated, very, very motivated, very determined. We had um, supportive family, and I think we always wanted to strive for excellence. So that was our key to keep going and going and going. Um, but then we felt like even as young children, we feel like there must be a better way. And that's why we found um, when we got into the field of speech pathology, we were like, oh yeah, we're going to help kids like us. And we knew this since we were like in eighth grade. Yeah, we were like, we're going to start helping kids like us. And that's what it is. But throughout our childhood, we really struggled. We were like coming home, we, even after we spent so much time studying, we we're still having a hard time when it came to performing and getting the task done. Um, we weren't big readers, even though in our in our household, there my cousin they were all reading, but we it were just model. oh yeah, it was just like it wasn't that it wasn't enjoyable for us. It's just that we just had such a hard time doing it. It was just yeah, we wanted to, but it was just not. It was just not happening. Yeah. So we go throughout our school years, and here and there, a teacher would say, huh, you know, you guys probably need a little tutoring." But because we worked so hard and compensated so much. We were hiding for so long. And I think even when we knew personally that we were struggling, we continued to like hide it. Like, oh, this is a secret. No one would know. And we just had opportunities right where we were about to be discovered. We would like have to go to a new school. Like, yeah. <laughs> hello, we're out of here. The minute it was going to come up as an issue, it was like, we got to go right. to a new school. Because now we're like from, we, we came to the U.S., back to the U.S. when we were in eighth, when we were going to the eighth grade. Okay. So the last year of middle school, by the time that was like, hey, there may be a, we were in high school. Mm -hmm. In high school, wow. we compensated so much. And you know, in high school, if you're honestly, if you're good and you get your work done, you can really just slide your way through it and mm -hmm. just be undetected. Mm -hmm. Like we went totally undetected. We were in honors classes, honors English. <laughs> Okay. We were in the Honors Academy, we held all the accolades of, wow, they are like, no one knew. We had like one teacher that was like, suspecting something, but by the time we got to his class, we were seniors. Yeah. Wow. So we were graduating again. Yeah. Gus? Mm -hmm. So, yeah, I just want to ask you a quick question. So as I'm listening to you ladies speak, did you guys were each other's support systems? 
Yeah. Right. So I mean, like, did, did you did you guys know individually and then kind of confide each other, or did you guys not even talk about it? Like, how did you guys support each other throughout this journey? We were like very. I, as I reflect on it, we were very mature. We were like best buds. Spoke about it, cried about it together. You know, we told our grandma like, I think we need more help. Our family tried to get us tutoring. At the, at that time, we lived in Trinidad. And okay. academics there is like really like they put your scores for your exams in this paper. <laughs> the whole country could see. So you're like it's a lot of pressure. <laughs> it's it's a lot. It's a lot, and the expectations yeah. are so high. Um, but we were each other's support since we were like nine years old. We got up at five o'clock in the morning every wow. day, and we would stay up and we would study. And our study was let's memorize the book. We just we had great memories, and we just memorized books from cover to cover. We we're like, okay, wow. this page. Like when I went to do a test, I was like, I know it's on page nine. I know it. I know it's on page nine, and I'll try to figure it out. That photographic then, memory. Yeah, <laughs> and I'm like, what? When I do it, I'm telling the teacher, I know it. I know it. And then I got all the spelling wrong. Couldn't even understand it. And I was like, I studied, and it was just like didn't get it like okay if you studied why didn't you do well you know right um, but we were always each other support that's I'm so grateful that I had her um well I have her as a sister and you know we were able to do this together yeah I mean we yeah. the benefit in that well and and because I see that you know I feel like this is the first time I've actually had twins <laughs> on a, um, a show talking about it and it actually brings it back to when I was in public school I actually had triplets on my caseload mm -hmm. and they all had a variation of a language disability and it was interesting i actually was their case manager for two years they helped each other so if if one you know a teacher called on student x and then you know the sister was in the back and could hear she was struggling she would you know basically support her and it was just so interesting watching them so, like support each other in a way where they knew oh my sister's struggling like like I got to take care of that I got to make sure I, I support her so I love seeing this sisterhood throughout this journey because you really do understand each other right right yeah we do we do I mean she actually once when we were like in like what would be equivalent to like first grade here a kid was laughing because yeah. of something and she turned her laughing at me because of something I read she turned around and took the notebook and hit the kid yeah. I was like no you don't laugh <laughs> <laughs> she had my back, and I was like, "Yeah, we don't laugh. No, we're not doing this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah we definitely had that support. So, um, and we're grateful, and that's why we're doing what we do now. Yeah. Um, and we started the web. We have a web series where we review children's books and young adult books. Okay. Where we focus on our, well, our mission is to share culturally um, accessible, culturally relevant, yes. and engaging books um, for struggling and reluctant readers. Yeah. Um, in hopes that we can just let everyone know, like, reading could be challenging for those that struggle to read, but we don't always not want to read. It's just sometimes we don't get the best choices of books right. that might be accessible to us. Yeah. Yes. And, and that might too. be engaging. Right. Right. So that was right. one. That was one aspect of our story is that when we got books that were more engaging, then we started being more interested in reading. Like, oh, this is this is a great, like we love this. This book really relates and connects to us and we can actually read and understand some aspects of this. Because our reading comprehension was fine. And I think that's right. what got us through uh, a lot of school, a lot of college. It was more of like, the spelling, the decoding. It took us a very long time to read and decode words. So everything was a slow, laborious process. But we did stick through with it. And I think half of what made us do that was finding books that were really engaging. So that's something that I try, we try to bring into our therapy room now. Like, yeah, we're going to teach the decoding stuff. We're going to teach you the fine stuff of how to read. But we also want you to develop a joy of reading because you're not going to get better at it unless you practice. Yeah. So. Right. And and you ladies brought up a really good point about, um, you know, windows and mirrors. Mm -hmm. So when, when, when we have literature that's just whitewashed and we have these struggling kids of color, yeah. they want to read, they want to engage. But mm -hmm. oftentimes some of the white educators out there may not see that. And mm -hmm. they're putting this book in front of this child where they're like, I can't relate to this. This isn't what my hair looks like. This isn't my lived experience. So when you do bring those opportunities into the equation, I think it does open up the opportunity to say, hey, I actually wanna show you, I wanna learn, but I need help decoding, or I need help spelling, or whatever that is. So yes. I, I love I love that you guys are doing that. 
Yes. Yes. Thank you. Thank you. It's been a process and a journey, and we just keep going at it. You know.、Um, I think that we're getting great feedback, and it's good to. I think breaking it down to say like, hey, I'm in middle school, and you're giving me this book that's at my reading level, and it looks、yeah. like ten pages, and how much that like kills your self esteem. Like I've been through exactly,、that. and I'm like, I don't want other kids to go through that. And I think educators and parents, if they had the tools, they would be like, okay, well, let what other books are there, and why does this book? We try to explain why is the book accessible for、right. those that are struggling. You know, sometimes YA books are really good, young adult books are really good for,、um, or middle school grade books are good for high school kids who are struggling. So they look like regular chapter books. The、they、chapters、do. might be smaller, shorter, and it's just like the content is so rich. Like you know,、um, and things that are definitely culturally relevant, engaging, get people going, get readers going. You know, I I just really enjoy it. Yes. No, I love that, and I feel like we could talk forever about that. But I want to get back to you guys and your diagnosis. I do have a follow-up question. So, you said that you were diagnosed in grad school. So let's talk a little bit about that. Was it finally that this is just because I know、um, who I don't know because I'm not an SLP, but seeing the work you all have to do, I mean, a lot of people don't understand the work that goes into being an SLP. All the things that you guys do, I have so much respect. For your profession, and I love meeting Black women in that profession, especially. But was it kind of like, I can't, I just can't take it. I need to just figure out. I mean, like, how did you know now is the time? I, I got to figure this out. <laughs> so we had we had different stories. I got diagnosed in 2012. We graduated in 2012 from grad school. Mine was more of like I was in the medical. We have to do practicums, and I was in my medical setting. And、yeah. the, the the supervisor that was there,、uh, for the, he wasn't the best. Let's just say he wasn't the best of you know. So it was more of like I'm not forced into it. Yeah, more of like kind of like a twisting of a hand. Like oh, you got to go get diagnosed. And this is a thing. And it wasn't something that I thought I was ready to do, but I did it anyway. So I think because I did it that way, I think it had more of a, like a. Effect on me, like when I after I got my diagnosis, I was devastated. I was like, Oh my、wow. god, this is like,、mm-hmm. what did I do? Why did I become a speech therapist? This is like horrible. How am I supposed to help people if、right. I have this too? And it was just like I said, she said, whatever you do, I told her based off of my experience, which I I regret, I apologize for. Say, don't go get diagnosed. Don't do it. It's not don't worth do it. it. <laughs> don't do it. You're gonna feel horrible, and because that's all the feelings I had. So it took me a while. Like once I had the diagnosis, I like couldn't even read the the report. Right. I was just like, I gotta put this away, you know. So it wasn't until I got diagnosed in twenty eighteen, way after grad school. Oh wow!、Yes. I waited. Yeah. I waited because I was like, I don't need to go through this. I saw what she went through, and I was like, ah,、oh, I don't know. I already graduated. You know.、Um, But I was just like, you know what? If I'm gonna advocate for kids, and I am ashamed of getting diagnosed myself or figuring out what this was, then what makes me any different, right? I want to be an example for other, for other students, other children. So I decided to get diagnosed、um, as well, and the experience was totally different for me. It was because there was a level like of acceptance, like I understood, and I and I realized that that didn't define me. You know, it、right. wasn't like, oh well.、Um, You know, I'm trying not to define myself by labels. Like, oh, she's a speech therapist, and then oh, now she's a speech therapist with a learning disability. Like, I'm way more than a diagnosis. Exactly.、Um, and I think that I think that it's important to say that narrative. It was、um, important for me to get diagnosed to accept who I was. Like, that's part of the process, but I think that's also part of my purpose. Like, your purpose comes, and it's like, okay. Why would I have a struggle with this and then happen to get into the career of speech pathology? And you know what? What would be a purpose without a challenge, right?、Um, so I think acceptance is part of it, and realizing like I like to say a learning difference because、yes. it's just a difference. There's so many people that learn like we do,、um, and it's just a difference, and it's okay. It, there's no norm. We all have some level of. Difference, yeah. right? You know, so it's a level of acceptance, and I think that that was the moment for me to accept who I was, to understand,、right. hey, this is a part of who I am. It's just like how I cannot dismiss the fact that I'm black. You know, I have to accept that this is how my brain functions. This is how I work. 
So me den- denying it doesn't make it go away. Right. So. And you know, I love how your stories are so different, but you ladies have clearly reflected and you know your purpose. And I actually can relate to that a lot because I myself was diagnosed with ADHD in college. And I at first I was like, yes, now this is why I struggled and it was so hard and and just like you ladies like I would study 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 and fail every test. My SATs I'm putting out there. It was an 850. I was so ashamed so embarrassed i was like i'm stupid I, i like i always wanted to get my doctorate but i was like how am i going to get to grad school i can't even take these tests and thank goodness i had track and that was my my ticket into college but i busted my butt and i still was getting c's and then once i got that diagnosis it was very similar where i was like i'm going to be a special educator because i get it and this is my purpose and i love that we as black women are talking about this because we don't in the black community we don't talk about these things and we're ashamed and yeah. we're embarrassed yeah. and i honestly like i see all these amazing people in this chat i see jennifer's here i see that janette is here like i love that we have this community where we are supporting each other and we're talking about this stuff so i thank you so much for sharing your differences you know because yeah, yeah, it yeah. really does impact us <laughs> yes, yes, yes yes yeah and now i'm like if i know that someone has it has like if they're questioning i'm like you know what just go get diagnosed i mean it's not easy what we found in our journey is not easy to get diagnosed as an adult mm-hmm. it's not easy to find someone that would evaluate you as yes. an adult So it's almost because the the first first the insurance companies may not want to cover it it's very expensive and then everybody else like but why do you want to know like people why do you want to you're already successful you're already successful like, you want to know like what's the point like what's right. the point you know but i do think what i think is really missing or what i hope that we can create as a community is a community so when people do get diagnosed with either either be children or adults that they have somewhere to come to where they could share their experiences because half of the process of 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 healing from the pain you went through is telling your story is telling people like hey this is i'm not you, i went through this and it's also hearing other story like you're not alone i went through the same thing and i think the more people hear the stories of people who have dyslexia especially uh black and brown people who people who look like us there will become more of an acceptance like this is not a death sentence right. you are not doomed yeah, you right. know you learn differently i feel like it's a death sentence like it's so much shame everybody's uh, embarrassed and the thing is it runs in families in exactly. general no it just goes undetected and covered up so i feel the more we uh speak about it the more we let people know about it the more we say hey look at me i'm a person that has a learning difference then the more other people be willing to share their story and bring down the stigma especially in our community where people still have a lot of shame about you know and this a mis- oh mistrust of special education yeah, yeah. Yeah. No, that's yeah. so spot on. It's so spot on and you know, if you look at the prison system, and you know, you see mostly brown and black folks in there and they're now like diagnosing dyslexia and it's like could we have done this like when they were in first or second grade, not when they're in their 20s or 30s or 40s already incarcerated and they're live that changed the whole trajectory of their lives. Exactly. 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 Yeah, exactly. And it, it it runs down generation after generation after generation. I mean, I can talk about this forever. Yes. Like, I know. Like, you can open up a whole that particular topic for yes. me. I can speak about that forever and how I see it in the school system, how I see it displayed in the school system, how I see the school system, how we even treat and diagnose people of right. different um cultures and ethnicities differently mm-hmm. the resources that they get differently when it comes to diagnosing kids with dyslexia or a learning disability or being not but not being very uh specific about it it's i can talk about it yeah. forever and the resources it's right. like it's just a lot it's just a lot so yeah and i think for me what was unique about my situation is i when i got diagnosed i was already done with grad school i was practicing for a while my challenge was finding someone that can evaluate me mm-hmm. with the understanding that i've done some of these tests you know oh, yes, I, that's a good I, point. i know what's yeah so now i've been teaching reading intervention for a while i've been you know doing so i'm like you can't give me the self 
like <laughs> I administer that like every other day like and really it really made me think and sit back like how are we assessing students with learning disabilities even adults and my my passion for that like all adult you know at this point sometimes adults are able to read and just finding someone who is able to really tune in and be sensitive to the fact like hey this person may have knowledge and access about certain things how can i tap into it differently in order to um get what i need to figure out whether or not they have a learning disability at this age or you know or that learning difference or if it's just like they don't read often or you know yeah no absolutely so i want to actually ask you guys a final question because we're talking because i see some of the um comments here talking about community and how school can be really traumatizing um but in terms of hereditary and all that as we know as professionals how did your family your your parents your guardians whomever raised you how did they react when you shared this information that was interesting because um i felt like we really 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 put it out there when we started the web series um and we were very nervous about it yeah. we were very concerned i was yeah. like we got to go to counseling <laughs> we put it out there and no one says anything Yeah, I put it like we have a family chat and we're and it's like they love us and stuff. And no one's they were like, "Yeah, this looks amazing. This is great. So proud, so proud." And in, in the first season, we had a snippet of our story and no one ever referenced the story like, "Oh, I didn't know that." Or and no one said anything. So we're like, they didn't really say anything. So we're like, "Oh, okay, maybe they just didn't they don't get, get it." it. <laughs> so, uh, wow. after all, my mom and my dad were very like, "You know what?" I, I think I have it too. They both. And I think I saw it in both of them prior to. Mm-hmm. Like, oh, okay. And then after I had my diagnosis, then I can see more clearly. But my mom was very specific of saying, "Oh, you know what? I think I have a a disability too." Yeah. I mean, she doesn't say what like a disability, but she said, "I think I struggle with that too." And I know for sure, definitely, my dad does. So, and they're both adults working, successful in their own right. But it was just like, yeah. So our extended family didn't say anything. They were very supportive, mm-hmm. um, but they weren't like, "Oh, you know." I think maybe they don't know what to say, or like, you yeah. know, you're like, "Okay, what should we say to that?" But you know, it doesn't matter. Yeah, you guys did right. Family, you know, right. But our parents, my mom, especially my mom, she, I think she resonated way more. Like she was like, "Oh, that was like, oh, that yeah. kind of hit her." And I don't know, maybe be, I don't know if it's because maybe she knew that she knew we were struggling, but she didn't know. Yeah, like, I know what you mean. Yeah, yeah. she's like she had that mother instinct, but that's the other thing too. Like they if you don't know what you don't know. Like you know mm-hmm. as a as a parent like, you know, well, my kids not really athletic, but I'm going to still put them in sports cuz that's what kids right. like. You yeah. know, like oh, my kid struggles with reading, but let's read more, you know, and it's mm-hmm. and it's my guess is you know, your family didn't know what to say, and yeah. I think there's still so much shame around it. I mean there's yeah. so much shame and reading and writing are civil rights and when we struggle with that we don't have the support and we're just pushed along especially as black kids it's a whole different ball game so yeah. that's interesting yeah. cuz I know for me when I shared my diagnosis with my parents I think they were a little bit in disbelief you know it was just like oh you were just hyper you were just you you know and I'm like no there's a diagnosis for this you know yeah. so yeah. I think I think my biggest concern was especially with my mom was thinking like hey you did what you did and you did what you knew best to do at that time because you know that it could be that parent guilt like oh there should have been something more I did you know right. and it's just like you know understand accepting like hey you did what you did and the time and the resources that you had and it's like yeah we are successful now and now we know why we struggled so now we know to the next generation like hey this might be something to look out for and i think just talking about it being open and transparent about it is how we grow into becoming more you know accepting and 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 supportive as a community and to develop the language on hey what do you say you know people don't want to be rude or insensitive or disrespectful so sometimes yeah. they're like oh okay well i'm proud of you and then there's silence on the other end you know right. cuz they don't know how to be you know i want to be insensitive or right right you know? yeah yeah now that that makes sense well ladies listen this conversation has just been so fruitful so amazing so many like big points i would actually love if we could do a part 2 about right. whatever whatever flows you know because yes. i just 
there's been so much awesome engagement and I just, I love your energy. So thank, thank you. Thank you. you. Thank you. We could definitely do this again. Yes. Yes. Well, ladies, I, um, I hope you have a great Saturday. Thank you everyone for, for popping in, for listening. Um, you can obviously feel free to view this later. Oh, and I should say, so I have a fake dyslexia app. I need to start saying this. So all of these episodes are going to be housed in my app. So they'll be living on my Instagram page for a little bit, but the whole point is I want a community on my Think Dyslexia app. So you can download that in the App Store and Google Play. There's free content there. Um, I also have some coaching programs that are not yet out there for the public to just buy yet, but the app is is definitely a one-stop shop of community and all that. And I definitely want everyone to re-watch this episode and other episodes. And yeah, so thank you. Thank, thank you, you for having us. Thanks for having us. All right. Well, I will be in touch with you ladies and have a good afternoon, everyone, or morning, wherever you are. All right. Bye. Bye.